Here's a question I got in my Art Brush Workflows course that I think can be helpful. If you're ever working with brushes like this, these are art brushes in Illustrator, and you can tell those in the brushes panel by seeing these brushes that are stretched out across the width of the brush panel. So if I come over here and grab this ellipse tool and I've got that red brush selected and I draw a circle, we'll see, you know, there's a missing bit of art there. So how do you get this to close up? That was the question that I got. And the reason that it's not closing up here, of course, is because there's a little bit of tapering going on. And you can see that over here, the edges of the brush at the ends are tapered somewhat. And so in order to make a brush where the texture is gonna go evenly all the way around the circle, we need to first edit this brush. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna keep the original and make a copy of this. So the first thing is to take this and drag it to the plus sign and that just duplicates the brush. Then I'll come over here to this circle and I'll make it a little smaller and apply the copy to the to the circle um, just so I have this to compare the two brushes after I do this editing. Then what I'm going to do is drag this artwork, clicking and dragging it to my artboard so that I can make this edit. And I'm going to do this editing using the eraser tool. So that shortcut is Shift-D, but it's located right here in the tool panel. And so when I get the eraser tool, it's round to begin with. And it actually, you'll see what happens. It didn't erase it there. And this is one of the rules of the eraser tool. If you have something else selected in your file, like I have this circle over here, it's going to think that I want to erase that. So if you um, have everything deselected, and I just deselected there, now I'll be able to erase here. All right, so for this, what I want to do is use the eraser tool as a block or a square or rectangle. And I'm going to do this by holding on the Option or Alt key. And that gives me this marquee that I can use to erase with. And this gives me a nice flat edge here, which is going to be better when this brush travels around the circle. We won't see that gap anymore. Now, another thing that I like to do before I put this back in the brushes panel, there's a bounding box here, which is an invisible, no fill, no stroke shape rectangle that I just selected there using my white arrow. This is created automatically by the brushes panel when you take art and you drag it in there to first create the brush. And just to be on the safe side, as I'm editing an existing brush, I like to just delete that. Um, so we're starting fresh as if I created this art from scratch to drag it into the panel. Here's another thing that we can do. Before I drag this into the panel, rather than creating a new brush, I just wanna replace the copy here. So to replace a brush that's existing already in the panel, just hold down on your Option or Alt key and drag this in. You can see the, the green plus sign. And basically I'm just overwriting that brush. The settings will be the same, but I've just changed the artwork. So it's a nice shortcut. And then I'm gonna apply it to the strokes. And so we'll see that circle when I look at that backing out here. Um, what we have is now that brush travels nicely around the circle. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see there's a bit of a flat edge there. So it all really depends on the artwork that you have. You might wanna come in and erase a little bit more and see if you can get those edges to match up better. It really all depends on the scale of this, whether this will even be visible um, at the scale that you intend to use it at, but that's just something to be aware of. And so here's the second part of that question. Again, when you have a brush like this that you want to use on a closed shape and you want it to, function like an edge brush so that you can see, you know, you've got a fill here, Let's select that again, put the fill color in, and you can see, you know, it looks like a shape with a textural edge on it. But a lot of my students like to make patterns or work on intricate art and some brushes like this that have a lot of detail in them. Let's just take this art here and drag it out. If I look at this in the document info panel with that art selected under objects, we can see there are 2,368 anchor points, and that's a lot. If I were to use this in a repeat pattern, I would be using that brush over and over again and multiplying that by the number of anchor points here, and the art may just get so complex that it slows Illustrator down. So we're always looking for ways to optimize our brushes and save some of that processing power. 
And I have another video that goes deeper into that, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. So if you're intending on using it as an edge brush on a closed shape like this, you don't really need the inside edge of the brush. Like this, all this art here is really not necessary. So let's make another edit. And again, we'll use the eraser tool to do this. So I'll grab the eraser tool and hold down on the option or alt key to make it a marquee and just erase half of the brush like that. Now I'll drag it back into the panel again, holding down option or alt. This time I'm not going to erase that bounding shape, but you can do that. I like to do that sometimes just to let Illustrator recreate it. Um, and then click OK, apply to strokes. And now let's take a look at it on this artwork. So when you do this, it'll be a little bit more obvious if I uh, reduce the size of this circle, but you're starting to see now the problem here, which is that the circle, the fill, um, is a hard edge. And so it's not looking quite like I want it to with a nice, you know, real textural edge where you can't see the original hard edge of the circle. And that's just because the fill here is maybe a little easier to see if it's black. And that's just because the brush itself is not aligned to the outside of the circle. It's kind of split half of it inside, half of it outside. So let's make another edit to this brush. And this involves using that bounding shape that we were talking about before. So this time I'm gonna drag this art out here. Let me go ahead and I'll just delete that and drag the art out. We'll make another edit to it. That bounding shape is actually what controls how that art is oriented to the path. And so we need to make that bounding shape bigger. Right now, by default, that rectangle is drawn around the shape. And so the path is going to go right through the middle of it. You can kind of gauge that just by looking at these side handles here on the bounding shape. That's where the path is going right now. We want to kind of trick Illustrator into putting that path right here at the bottom edge. And so to edit this first, I need to get my white arrow because this is all grouped together here and select that bounding shape. And then from my white arrow or my direct selection tool, I need to switch to the selection tool to the black arrow. And I'm just going to tap V on my keyboard to do that. Now I have bounding box handles here and I can just stretch this out you know, like any other shape in Illustrator. And I'm just stretching it out until those middle handles get close to the bottom edge. And so now I know that the brush is, is going to be applied to the path at this level right here. Okay, so now let me take this and again, hold down on the option or alt key now that I've altered that bounding shape and put it back in here and click OK and apply to strokes. And now look at that. The brush is actually oriented outside of the circle. And so now I'll go ahead and just make this red fill like that. So it looks like a, a more solid shape. So now this edge brush is more efficient because we've removed the art that you don't even see. And it's obvious when you look at it in the panel uh, that the brush has been altered to make a nice edge brush for closed shapes. All right, so I hope those have been some helpful art brush tips for you in Illustrator. I have a course called Art Brush Workflows inside of my membership uh, that people seem to really enjoy because it teaches you a lot about the mechanics of working with brushes like this so that you can create the art that you want to create in Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Illustrator. You can find out more on my website at lauracoylecreative.com. And thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and give me a thumbs up.